Hi, David Fine here from Keys Moths. Uh, so I'm about to head into work and I noticed that one of my tropical sphinx moths that I've been raising just emerged. I wanna show them to you guys. If you don't remember, and if you didn't see the video, about a month ago, uh, Ricky and I, my buddy Ricky, went down to Key Largo for Moth Week and we went on a nighttime UV flashlight. Check these things out, these things are so cool. UV flashlight moth walk at night. And what we did was we were able to find some Sphinx caterpillars using this ultraviolet light. And one of the species that we found was the streaked Sphinx, Protambulux stragilis. Uh, I've actually never documented the life cycle before. And so it was exciting for me to get my hands on a caterpillar for the first time. I found one a long time ago but the caterpillar was parasitized and never made it through. And so this time, guys, it popped out. I'm gonna show it to you right now. All right, so when you're going to work, <laughs> of course, the guy pops out when you need to get to work. So let's see if the UV flashlight, now, the, only the caterpillar lights up under UV. Uh, this guy, he has a coloration that is a lot more brown and camouflaged. Um, so what we're going to do guys, we are going to take a look at our streaked Sphinx that just popped out. Check this out guys. <clears throat> okay. So the streaked Sphinx, uh, and if you've seen on my other videos, there is some confusion on what the identification of this moth is. Some people call it Pertambulix strigillus. Some people call it Carter's Sphinx, Pertambulix carteri. And there seems to be a lot of confusion on that, but I'm gonna call it strigillus because it just seems like to be the majority. That's not the very scientific way to do it, but you have people disagreeing with you no matter what you do sometimes. But look at this guy, what a beauty, beautiful moth. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> now, if you don't remember from the video when I was raising this thing, uh, this specimen was found on poison wood and I got a pretty nasty reaction from the sap of the tree because the tree sap is very toxic and it will give you a rash a lot like poison ivy. It lasted for over two weeks on my arm and it was very irritating very itchy and you know it's a nasty rash so raising poison raising stuff on poison wood's not fun so what i did was i brought him home and i switched him on to brazilian pepper which is actually in the same family now i react to poison i uh i react to uh brazilian pepper as well but not nearly as bad as po as poison wood so um now what happened was when i switched them over uh the caterpillar did not really like the switch. I mean, they eat Brazilian pepper in nature, which is good, uh, and they, they live on it, they thrive on it, and they get to a normal size uh, in nature when they're eating on it. But a lot of times when a caterpillar is switched from one host plant to another, it doesn't really like to switch. And so in this case, same thing happened. This guy switched, and what happened was the caterpillar barely ate anything in the final instar, and the size of this moth came out very stunted. If you know anything about this moth, um, the, even though it looks like a big moth, this is a actually very, very tiny specimen. Um, it is very undersized because it didn't, it didn't eat a lot as a final instar larva. And so um, we are going to um, take a look. It, and although it looks, it looks very healthy, um, and the cool thing is it has this, it's one of these brick colored ones. The underside, you can see the underside of the moth has that brick reddish coloration. Most of them are either orange or yellow. And some of them have this brick color. And it's cool that the first one that we raised comes out with the brick coloration, the reddish coloration. Let me show you these hind wings if I can. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, let me see, are you gonna? 
you're gonna crawl up on my fingers. All right, let's see. That's, that's gonna probably be a thumbnail shot right there. Okay, let me see if I can show you these hind wings, guys. Um, the hind wings on this species are always the same color as the underside. So, yeah, he's being, he's being shy. All right, let's see. There we go. Look at the hind wing color, guys. Look at that beautiful hind wing red, reddish coloration. And that, that is a beautiful moth right there. So, um, I'm not gonna push the envelope unless, unless this guy just wants to show me his stuff. This is a male specimen and you can tell the difference because Sphinx moths have enormous claspers and even though they're covered with scales, let me see. Even though the claspers are covered with scales, this little this little pointy appendage right here on the tip of the abdomen, th those are claspers. And claspers are open and closed like this. And what they do is they will, in mating, they'll grab onto the female abdomen and hold her in place while they mate. And so this is a male um, with those big claspers and tiny guy, um, tiny but mighty. So common moth down here in South Florida, guys, uh, this, this moth is pretty much everywhere. And the reason being is because it has taken up host plant for the ex with the exotic Brazilian pepper, Shinus terebinthifolia. And, you know, Brazilian pepper now goes all the way up to Northern Florida. And, you know, poison wood is only limited to Dade and Broward County. And I think, um, some on the little bit on the on the west coast there. Uh, they they have them down there as well, but but that's it for the range of that plant. So this moth, because Brazilian pepper got here and is now spreading like crazy and is uncontrollable and is a actually a horrible problem down here in South Florida. This moth is one species that does not mind the uh, Brazilian pepper phenomenon down here. So um, guys, that's about all we got right now. Um, I'll show you more on some of the other species we have. Oh, one other thing. Look at the spikes on the hind, on the legs. Right on the joints of the legs, they have these spikes. And when, when you pick them up, if you were to try to handle them, a lot of times they'll jam those spikes into you. And it doesn't really hurt. They don't stab you with them. Um, but it's, it's uncomfortable. But and this moth also makes a pretty loud chirping noise. If you were to, if you were to actually grab the thorax, it, it makes a, an audibly hearable <laughs> chirping noise, which is very uncommon. Um, not many moth species have that kind of audible ability to do audible noises. And so, yeah, that's about all I got on the Strigillus, the streaked sphinx. Um, hope you liked the video, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you did. If you enjoyed it um, we'll get you more videos like this very very soon uh, if you haven't done so already please subscribe to our channel and uh, look out for our future videos on the moths and butterflies of South Florida uh, guys take care we'll see you soon